Hi everybody, welcome back to Gracious Living in the Time of Corona. And in particular, we're in the holiday season now, and so I'm going to prepare a dish that's uh, a little on the festive side. It's going to involve a combination of meat and fruit. Uh, this is pretty much everything they make in Chinese cuisine. It can, uh, combines those two elements. It's a little less... Uh, less seen in the West, although we have duck au orange that everybody knows. So this is another one of those dishes, but it's not going to be a sweet fruit sauce. And the reason for that is uh, we're going to pair it with my Any Gorilla Port Knockoff. It's called Any Gorilla because Any Gorilla can make port in California. <laughs> it's so easy. And it's really delicious and it has a little less alcohol, so it is suitable for the table if you have the right dish to go with it. So to make all this, you need to assemble everything I have in front of me. We're going to use the Phillips air fryer to cook the pork. You can just as easily do it in, in an oven at 375, but I really like the way it comes out in the Phillips fryer and it's quicker. Uh, but in any case, you're going to you know, you're going to go until it's 150 degrees Fahrenheit, and so you need a meat thermometer, uh, just uh, which you'll plunge into the center of the meat, and then you'll be able to tell when your pork is done. But trichinosis is not really a problem with pork in the United States. There are almost never any uh, cases where, where people get trichinosis from is bear, because they like to serve it nice and rare, and a bear is really a pig. But uh, anyway... People are so conscious about trichinosis. That's not really the problem, but frankly, I don't like the taste of pork when it's bloody. I don't like it when it's dry either, so that 150 degrees will give us a nice pink color, and uh, we'll let it rest, and it'll come up to about 155, and, uh, and that'll be just perfect, nice and juicy. Uh, I'm going to rub it with spike, which is a great little savory aroma, uh, and some black pepper. And before I do that, I'm going to use, going to rub it all with, uh, with ginger. You can use, uh, you can use any kind of ginger you want. Uh, powdered ginger has a different flavor. This is fresh ginger, and I get it from Trader Joe's in these little uh, packets here. It's all frozen, and so I'm just going to, uh, pop those in the microwave for a few seconds and uh, and spread it on meat. Before we do that, let's talk about how we're going to make the sauce. I have here six ounces of organic blueberries. And then I've got uh, some whole cloves, uh, a stick of cinnamon, just like that. Uh, a bay leaf and I'm also gonna use a little bit of uh, powdered lemongrass and the, and the juice of, all, of a whole lemon right there so all of that will be put together uh, you might as well get started on that now and then we're gonna garnish well the vegetable that'll go along with this uh, will uh, will be uh, steamed broccoli and I'm going to put a little bit of uh, rosemary sea salt on that for a nice flavor. So those are all the things you need to assemble. You're going to need a little bit of brandy when we uh, finish the sauce and, and uh, we're also going to thicken it with uh, two teaspoons of arrowroot. Now you can use cornstarch if you want to but I like the, the texture of uh, arrowroot and, uh, and it has uh, less carbohydrates in it as well, a lower glycemic index. So this is kind of a keto recipe. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. First, we'll just put all the blueberries in there and get that lemon going. Now, if you have a lemon juicer, that's great, but you can also just go right with your, use your fingers to filter out the seeds.
Okay, then here's our cinnamon stick and our bay leaf. We're going to have a couple of cloves. Just a quarter teaspoon of lemongrass powder in there. Put enough water to cover. And then we'll just put that on the stove until the berries pop. It's going to take, bring it to a boil. And, and so it's really a lot like making a cranberry sauce. I'm going to go ahead and put these in the steamer, but I, I, I'm not going to turn it on until we're pretty close to ready. It only takes about eight minutes to steam broccoli, and we don't want it to be mushy. All right, so now I've, I've uh, nuked these uh, to thaw them out, and now I'm just going to rub that all over the all over the roast. So I'm going to do this at 400 degrees. Let's do it for 18 minutes and then we'll take a look with our thermometer. It's a pretty thick tenderloin so the ones you'll more commonly find in the store are half that thick and they should get done in about 15 minutes but always we're going to use that thermometer to check and see and, and uh, monitor our progress. Okay. Uh, started the broccoli and I've set the timer for eight minutes. Uh, we still have another six minutes or so to go on the pork and it may take a little longer so it's a good time to get that started. Now as soon as we brought this to a boil you can see that we all oh, their skins came off and they popped and everything okay. so it really doesn't take very long for the sauce to make itself but you do want to let it sit for about 15 minutes because you want to get the flavor out of that cinnamon stick and that bay leaf. And so now we're, we're right where we should be there. And I'm going to go ahead and, and discard these. Okay, so now we need to correct the salt. A lot of good blueberry flavor there, but it's a little bland, so I'm going to... Put in salt to taste. Of course, everybody's taste is different. Yeah, that's, that's just right. So now we want to bring it back up to a boil. And we're going to put in some brandy. This is my, my favorite brandy from South Africa from Upland Estate. Uh, he's got his own little still that he built with his own two hands and, and he makes just about the best brandy in the world. So I'm going to put a couple of tablespoons in there. Uh, sorry Edmund, I, I hate to waste this stuff but I assure you we won't go to waste in this sauce. And then we're just going to bring that to a boil and let that good brandy flavor suffuse through the sauce and flash off and then we'll thicken it and to do that we've got a little water here maybe a, an ounce or two of water and then i'm going to put two teaspoons of arrowroot in here in cold water one of the nice things about arrowroot unlike flour is that it dissolves right uh, it doesn't it doesn't clump you just, you just put it in cold water and then just stir it around a little bit here's our sauce coming up to a boil and then we just dissolve that arrowroot in that water 
it's ready to add to the sauce. The only thing I like about arrowroot is that it doesn't obscure the flavor the way cornstarch does. All right, let's go look in on the pork. Okay, let's see what we got here. <laughs> it sure looks great, doesn't it? And I'll go right into the thickest part here. Okay, so that's about 130, not quite, 128. And that means we're gonna need a few more minutes here. Let's, uh, let's see what we do in about six minutes. Meanwhile, our sauce is coming out just perfect. And there's our timer, so our broccoli should be perfect. Oh yeah, that's just the way I like it. Perfect fit. Okay, there we go. We hit our 150 and now we've let it rest for 10 minutes. And now it's at 160, that's right where we want it. Let's take a look. Now what we're gonna do is cut this up into medallions so that we can serve two or three per person. There you go, look at that, nice and nice and juicy and pink. Uh, that is absolutely perfect. And I've made myself a little cabrisi salad to go along with. And we'll put the meat right here. And then arrange it a little bit so it's pretty just like so and then here's my broccoli so we've got ourselves a nice Christmassy coloration there red and green and wait till you see how red this this sauce is And, and uh, as I said before, I, I love my broccoli with a little rosemary sea salt on it. Yes. All right, now we'll just take some of this sauce and just sauce those medallions with this spicy blueberry sauce. It's crazy, doesn't it? Okay. Okay. So let's see what we got. And, uh, mm, mm. I'm telling you, blueberries and pork, there's nothing like it. We haven't made a sweet sauce here. It's a little bit tart. The sweetness is going to come from my pork knockoff here. This was, this started out as a, a problem we had in the vineyard in Lodi in 2017. We made a Cabernet, it just wasn't farmed correctly, and so the tans came out dry, and we, we, we knew we couldn't bottle it as a Cabernet, so we put some Petit Syrah, and we put some oh, high proof alcohol very clean and then I found an old barrel of 2006 marriage and we threw that in there too made the whole thing in an hour and boy I'll tell you if you want to talk about blueberries here they are
Oh man. Ha! Ah. Well, um, gotta have another bite of that. Happy holidays in the town of Corona.